My name is Ramsey, and welcome back to Slice and Dice, where we're going to be taking down Unfair in the Shortcut. Hell yeah. Ooh. Interesting. So we're shown the rarity of these options being offered to us. Basic, basic, uh, magical, 0.8, and Sasab, basic backwards, 0.1. I'm going to take magical. So instead of having a yellow or a gray character, the characters that are typically most capable of producing defensive effects, we have a lot more mana generation and more healing. Add an evoker? You can just add another member to the party? Of course, it's gonna cost us nine points to do. Dead Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Dead Crow must be equipped. Start of turn. Turn one, I die. Cool. Uh, do I have an item that just prevents that or something? That'd be cool. None of these items immediately do that, fair enough. Uh, add chomp every third turn. Mm, that's kind of difficult. I'd have to really blow through fights to get past those chomps. Chomps have 10 HP themselves as well as deal at least 10 damage to our party. Um, there's mid blank, replace all the heroes middle side with blank. For many heroes, like Jester, Herbalist, Alien, for many heroes, that's their best side. Worst. No burst. I could have no burst for this entire run where I have mostly mana generation. That doesn't seem great. Uh, highest pain, add pain to all the highest pip sides. I don't really want any of these negatives. Like, really badly, I don't want these negatives. But if I re-roll, I have to take a different party formation. Honestly, I think I, I think I prefer that. This immediately kills a party member. This does a huge amount of damage to our party members if I get in any prolonged combat. This takes away our best abilities. This does a bunch of damage to my party members. This takes away one of my burst ability, uh, worst abilities as well. As, it literally takes away my burst ability, rather. Uh, and will also prevent me from giving defense to my characters. I'm gonna take the reroll and... Do I wanna do mountain? Two blue classes, two gray classes and a green. Where is our damage coming from for that class, uh, for that run? Let's find out. Add a wolf to every fight. See, that's what I want. A wolf to every fight for four. That sounds great to me. Uh, Leyline, the fifth spell that you cast each fight is free. Admittedly, I'll probably be casting a lot of spells. What with the old double blue. Tunnel vision, one less level up choice and one less offered item. Slow spells, maximum four spells cast per turn. Honestly, I'm probably not going to cast more than four spells per turn. That, add wolf, add an illusion, so add an illusion to each fight, just a small creature that I've got to get rid of, and then monster left, all monsters get plus three pips to the left side, I like it, I'll miss out on ley line, but that's fine. We have Sparky, Seer, as well as Warden, Wallop, and Spine. Only one of these that I think begs for explanation is the Spine, which also has, on hit, damage the attacker for one, so the Spine is spiky. Uh, let's give it an Enchanted Shield so that it's more comfortable being hit, as well as the Hissing Ring so that it's more comfortable doing damage. Wandify. at single use and plus one pip to the two right sides. More than happy to give that to the Wallop just so that we have a two damage self shield side. And then Seedling. Replace the left side with two damage growth. Honestly, I suspect the spines heal four will actually be pretty useful. Actually, maybe this is what I want to do. 
Yeah, I think the spine self heal is actually going to be really self heal. Targeted heal, rather, is, is going to be especially useful. That fanatic is looking to absolutely wrangle out Seer. I'd like to prevent that if at all possible, but I'm not seeing how at the moment. Um, spine has contributed nothing. I can take out Quartz and the Illusion. Oh, it has to have exactly 2 HP. Okay, not the Illusion as well, rather. Um... I end up losing Seer. The thing is, I don't see the version of this where I don't end up losing the Seer. Spine is using its most threatening side. Thankfully, the Fnatic is mostly dead at this point. Let's just take some big shields when they're offered. Damage the bones. Zap them. Damage the bones. Oh, zap can only be used once per turn. Okay, then I'll take out the illusion instead. So the fanatic's gone. Wiz in the back line is still capable of being stunned. Sparky, thank you for rolling the best available side. Take out the wolf and then the bones. Now the whiz is stunned, baby. Double stunned, even. Why don't you run away? Armor. The ability to roll something useful on every side of the die. I do like the armor. Or Bard, who has three cantrips, a reroll, gain one reroll, a shield one, and a damage one. They also have else. Using a blank side, you can shield one and cleanse. I love the value of that shield one and cleanse. I want to have one of my gray heroes capable of doing big defense to a target, and one of my gray heroes capable of doing some spread out defense. I also think it's important that my gray heroes are capable of doing some reasonable damage to the enemies, because I don't otherwise have much damage in my party. I'm going to take the Bard, ultimately. Bard pick! Unlock this, the item Enchanted Heart, which gives you a middle side of shield 2 to all allies, and I just had to pick the Bard twice. No problems, I love the Bard. I'm going to give the spine the two damage growth side now that I've had a couple fights. Yeah, so some of these characters like this illusion and this bones are clearly doing the leftmost side on their die with the plus three pips on it. And I'd really like to resolve that as quickly as possible there. So let's hit the bone, and then zap. Hmm. What if instead of that I just over-defended the bard to get the militia to run away? I think that might be a lot better for me. So instead, Sparky, you strike the bones that will kill you this turn. We'll defend the bard. Take out that bones. 
And unfortunately, the illusion is still going to be capable of hitting a five weaken on a character. <laughs> I tried to hit my mute button, but I failed. Uh, I was trying to prevent that five weaken. Uh, this just seems overall a much better outcome for us. Ooh, double cleanse is available this turn. Love it. Let's zap. Oh, no, that's not ranged. I can't use zap ranged. Interesting. Could have sworn I'd be able. Oh, I can't defend the seer enough. Uh, I did kind of have to expect that, right? Thankfully, with full focus, I'm capable of generating enough damage to get us to the next turn, where they all still decide to execute exclusively the Seer. Good lord, y'all. Cool, ya jets. And then there was one. Cracked wheel adds sticky to all sides, as well as plus one reroll. Admittedly, I would love to have plus one reroll when I have characters that have uh, cantrips. My main concern is that I don't think I have enough damage to actually even get through this fight in the first place, so adding more monsters to it right now seems terrifying. Sparky is the only one of my units that's even capable of doing four damage in a single instance. So maybe I get one of the zombies down? Whiskey and Ambrosia. Ambrosia adds rescue to the left side, so if it rescues a hero, it can be used again. I want that, and I want that on Warden. Shield 4, rescue. Great side. If only I had more rerolls so I could hit it more reliably. A lot of our characters just hit their best side immediately. I'm not going to push further. That's good enough for the Warden. Let's zap the wolf away. So now we're just down to two zombies and militia. So the militia is going to be easy. I should have the ability to give five shield to the bard. Oh. Sparky now has the ability to take out one of the zombies by itself, which is great because this zombie is trying to do five poison to a single target. Woof. Um... Take you out. Shield and burst. Sorry, that's the wrong target. There we go. Shield and burst. Gives five armor to the bard, so the militia runs away. Now it's just you and me, zombie. I honestly suspected this fight was going to be significantly worse for us. I I was. I'm not going to say I was ready to pack up and go home. Because I'm already home. Where do you think I record from? Anyway, let's foretell spending three of our mana this turn to gain four mana next turn. Hmm. Honestly, having some blank sides seems like it might be a really good idea right now. Ah, it's fine. Sparky saves us the trouble by immediately rolling the charge side, so we take out the enemy. Artificer. Who has a 3 damage single use. All sides, all of the Artificer sides are single use. So a 3 damage self heal, a 4 mana, another 4 mana, 2 damage charged, so it gets plus 1 additional pit for each stored mana, uh, 2 damage poison, and heal 10. They also have the spell Blades for 4 mana. They can deal 2 damage to all enemies. That's a good way for me to manage the, the illusion very quickly. 
And then there's a generated gray hero, and that's G3.A4F, who has shield 5 in cantrip, shield 5 cleanse, shield 2, and 4 mana single use. That's wild. They can just cantrip 5 block at someone. They can shield 5 cleanse a target. Uh, Seer, honestly, your one poison to a single target is probably better than Sparky's one mana. So I'll trade that unit off. And then I think we just keep on keeping on. Up against the Baron, both ghosts, a wolf, and an illusion. I really do want to throw poison. Like, as early as I possibly can in this fight. Let's take out the illusion before anything happens, and then I'll double foretell. So I'll get eight mana immediately next turn, which means if I do roll the charged side on Sparky, we basically just win. Because I can use all of that damage on the, there we go, Baron. Mm, our three middle heroes are going to exert if they ever manage to use a side this turn. Which is not great, but okay, it'll happen. I believe I can burst. No, right, of course I can't use enough spells to do it. I thought I was just gonna be able to burst the Baron to death. Alright, I'm going to be carrying three mana into next turn, and also generating an additional eight. Well, I'd love to see the other charged side, but I do not deserve it. I have to settle for what Sparky's really good at right now. believe I can survive the ghosts with just Sparky. Can I? I don't think I can. But I also don't think I have a better choice right now. Basically as well as we possibly could have near the end there. But unfortunately did not have the the the, the, the throughput to manage it. Uh, let's try that again because we're under 20 minutes. We can start another party. Strays. To the rarity of 0.1. Two rogues. Two orange characters. A grey character and two randoms. Versatile. Plus 13 level up choices. Interesting. Um, we have Pilgrim, one of the really cool new gray classes. They have target hero can use their die again, two sides that give self shield to a target hero. Uh, target ally cannot die this turn, as well as two stuns. We've got a scoundrel and a ranger, we've got a medic and a disciple. Okay, cool. Improvise armor. On turn one, all monsters reduce damage taken from abilities and dice by one. All poisoned. Because we do have two red characters, I think all poisoned might not be too bad for us. 
rushed. One less offered item. And then heavy dice cannot roll more than three dice at a single time. Or the small bonus, plus one pip to all smalls. I'll take that. I don't want to give the enemies the improvised armor. Pole arm! Replace my damage sides with my top side. No one wants to do that right now. Enchanted shield should probably go on the pilgrim. Trowel. Can't really use that. Full moon, hello. Every second turn, replace all my sides with the wolf's sides. Oh, sick, we're a werewolf. Uh, I'll give that to the scoundrel who otherwise struggles. Hell yeah. We're up against the militia and the banshee. They both target the scoundrel, so if I can give the scoundrel good enough defense this turn, we're off to the races. I suspect I can't, though. Because I'm not really good at actually generating defense. I'm going to stun the Banshee. Just in order to severely limit the amount of incoming damage that turn. Scoundrel is going to take a bite out of the Banshee. Get a bunch of healing on our characters. Pilgrim, do you want to stun? Yeah, you do. Stun the militia, and then I will gradually heal all of my characters. This is a little bit lazy, I suppose. But the militia still runs away at the end of the turn, so I can't feel too bad about it. Shining Bow, add ranged to all damage sides. That can be useful. I just don't know if I can take on the additional carrier and quartz for it. Trapper. Do you like the trapper? Kill an enemy with four or less HP ranged. Also two sides that dodge all effects this turn and two one damage vulnerables. There's also a generated orange hero, O2.ABB, who has four damage shifter, which has a... Uh, Shifter says, this side has a random extra keyword, changes each turn, and then the rest of the sides are underwhelming. Two one damage sides, a one damage cruel side, as well as a one mana side. I'll be taking the trapper here. Um, I don't really feel like the trapper is appropriate to change. Feels like the disciple might be the appropriate choice here. Pilgrim, you can keep your stun. We've got a randomly generated monster here that is doing a lot of damage and summons a bones when it is dying as well. Oh, wow. Real whiffs at the end there. Couldn't generate any additional damage on the trap of the life of me. Short trapper. You dodge. Disciple cuts at the bones. Imp follows it up. Pilgrim. Get healed and stun the ghost, preventing a lot of the incoming damage this turn. And now everything's much more manageable again. I'll take all the mana. You can still stun the ghost even if they are invincible to damage. 
We can exploit that there. The ghost is now dead. Fight 11 pauldrons. Change the top side and bottom side. Plus two and negative two, respectively. I'll take the pauldron and I'm going to put that on the ranger so that I have a three damage ranged cleave side here. Seems like it'll come in handy in this fight. And immediately does. Pilgrim. I really feel like you should probably be stunning a character or giving a re-up, uh, a return. Focus on the carrier for a second here. Take out courts in the meantime. Stop the carrier from giving poison to my favorite folk. Please. Oh, Ranger rolls the best side again. Yay. I wasn't honestly expecting that, but yay. Renew. Sets a hero to 4 HP. Okay, I'll just wait until next turn before I start unleashing spells if I need to. Down to just the Slimer and the Slimelet. And with the cooperation of the Pilgrim, the Trapper, and the Ranger are capable of taking the enemies out. Victory! When 195 fights, we've unlocked a difficulty heaven. Keeper. Two sides with shield to repel, two sides with shield five in steel, as well as apply self-heal and self-shield to a target this turn. And then the Fencer. Six damage. Of course, it's three by base, but it is currently affected by Pristine. So it's doing twice as much of that effect because we have full ma uh, max HP on that character as well as two sides that do two damage and double use, and one side that is one damage to all enemies. There's also a dodge. Um, I'm going to take Fencer, and it's purely for this reason. If I give the Fencer the Pauldron, it now has four damage double use, and then if I give you the Polearm, I can replace all your damage sides with your top side, which is four damage double use. So now the Fencer has four damage double use on all of the sides, as well as a dodge just in case they have to get out. Up against three bones and a rotten. It's worth noting that the bones are uh, particularly potent right now, courtesy of having, uh, what is it, plus one or plus two? Small bonus of plus one. Yeah, okay, just plus one. Ooh, I love this. Trap up, just execute a character. Fencer, execute two characters. Then, give the Fencer the ability to hit the Rotten two more times in the face. Love it. I don't think the Rotten can even get away from the damage I can put out this turn. Water. For the middle line, give plus one, negative one, plus one, negative one, plus one, negative one. Or two random tier three items. I'm gonna take water and pop that on the trapper, who's now capable of killing an enemy with five HP. I don't expect that to be hugely relevant, but it could be in the future. Let's first off use Glow and just save the Medic from death. And I really feel like I should probably just kill one of the bandits outright. Alternatively, I could try and set both of the... Ah, uh, that's the way that I actually do it. Yeah, yeah, I set both of the ghosts. They're both on 2 HP. So that means next turn, I only have to overkill one of them. I can kill one of them and then overkill one of them, or I can, more likely, overkill both of them with the W signs the Fencer has. <laughs> no, not re-rolling the glass of the Fencer, that worked out really well for us, actually. Uh, Valkyrie. 
Two sides that have target ally cannot die this turn. A shield to rescue, four damage death wish, as well as a revive. And witch, I do really like witch. Specifically because solve will mean that my mana can solve all of my poison problems. Let's take a witch. And the medic will be the one to be a werewolf now. Etc. Ooh, Trapper did actually land on a useful side that is going to be capable of getting the alpha down on turn one. We just have to set up some vulnerability on the target and then smack him down. I'd love if the Trapper could just pick up dodge right now. What a boon that would be to us. There it is. Now the unfortunate reality is that I'm still burning all of my W sides when I have to strike the Basilisk, so... Basilisk is being a little annoying. But thankfully we can push straight through that. Fight 15, and we've got a broadsword for four damage in the middle line. I do like a solid four damage in the middle line. I'll give it to the Medic this turn, in fact. Four damage to the single line, uh, middle line on this fight, in particular, is capable of taking out Knolls instantaneously, which matters. prevent some poison by weakening the snake this turn. We take out one of the gnolls and stun another one of them. Now we've just got the basilisk. Uh, oh, this is great. Yep, that'll do it. Uh, okay. Trapper, make the basilisk vulnerable. Fencer, kill the gnoll and then attack the basilisk. Medic, you attack the basilisk. One burst. We'll take out the snake, and now the basilisk will flee. Roulette or the doctor? Roulette. Seven damage, sticky, mandatory death. I do like that si We did just unlock the roulette specifically in the last episode as well, so I really feel like I should pick it. They've also got two two damage cleave sides, two two damage cantrip sides, a five damage side, and then, yes, the side that if they roll, they must die. Pilgrim could prevent that, though. Target ally cannot die this turn. Let's take Roulette. And the Witch can hold water, as it makes four mana out of all of her middle sides. And heal five cleanse is not that different to heal four cleanse, whereas four mana and heal four and cleave are significantly different. I'm going to prevent the roulette from dying by giving you the trowel, so instead of being able, even able to roll the sticky mandatory death side, you can't. Nah, you can't. Not allowed. You can only roll the other sides, which I think is really good because that'll give me the ability to exploit the cantrips of roulette, which are very, very powerful, as well as the AoE of roulette, which is, you wouldn't believe it, it's actually very, very powerful. Pop a 10 damage on the Troll King. You've got 6 health left at the end of this turn because of the 2 regeneration you have. 
AoE manages to take out the sniper in the back line. We've just got the slate to worry about at this point. That'll do. Fight 17. Sickle! Plus one pip to all of the lowest pip sides. I love Sickle. So Sickle would be good under the... Uh, the trowel, because it will give plus one to all of the sides except for the trowel at that point. Although it's also worth noting that the Witch would be capable of getting heal two boost as well as two damage weaken, which... Can be good. With the ability to kill the sniper in the back line with a three damage cantrip or the three damage AoE from roulette, I've decided to go with that. Ah, witch, you're capable of using your weaken this turn to prevent the demon from summoning in the first place. Love it. Paladin and Fate. Uh, all poisoned. I can go Fate. So Fate has Strand, which is a four mana spell. Heal to Spell Rescue. The cost is refunded if it saves a hero. Also Heal and Shield to mana gain on two sides. Single use, two mana on two other sides. And then a dodge. I do like Paladin, but I really like Pilgrim. I almost don't want to give the full moon back out. Heck, the broadsword doesn't really matter much more to me anyway. I should give the broadsword to fate still. And I don't think the full moon makes any more sense. Two wisps, a basilisk, a fanatic, and a banshee in this fight. Exclusively roll the boost. So, Fencer, take out Wisp on the top line immediately. And then, with the rule out, we can take out Banshee. And now that the Banshee is out, I can attack the Basilisk, stun it with Pilgrim, and then use a single burst to take out the Wisp. Things are going pretty well. More mana, the ability to stun, which I don't think is going to be relevant this turn. The, the Pilgrim's taking a lot of damage. Fight 19, Emerald Mirror. Gain the effects of all other tier to six to eight items on other heroes. So we would gain the effect of Sickle. Broadsword and water. No, I'll take two random tier five items, thank you. Scepter, replace the left side with one damage lead as well as sack of mana. Sack of mana is a good way to just turn the witch into a, a mana pump for us. I do like that. One damage lead can replace the trowel on roulette. Let's go. I want to be able to do five instances of damage to the Hydra. Ooh, both of the golems rolled a steel attack on turn one. They need to be dealt with. I, I can't really mess around with that. Uh, Fate, you should dodge, because... It, uh, boy. It's gonna hurt otherwise. Thank you, Fencer, for eventually rolling a damage side. Now that Fate is dodging, I don't have to worry about the golem on the top side. One, two, 
three and four. I'm going to take the Hydra out before anything else continues. And... We'll stun the Wisp that's intending to summon two additional bones to the field. Because the Wisp is small, so it gets plus one to all of its sides, including the summon. And then the bones themselves are also small, so they would get plus one to all of their sides. So I definitely don't want all of that to trigger at the same time. Roulette, welcome to a leading role. In doing so, you give... Uh, Fencer, five damage on each strike. That's the ability to take out the Wisp on the top line immediately. Now it's just you and me, Golem. Now it's just me, Golem. Prince. Three damage inspired. Doubles its effect if the previous die was higher. Shield three, duplicate, as well as heal and shield three, but... The usefulness here is really in Unite. Unite. Spend one damage pip, one shield pip, one heal pip, and one blank side in order to do damage. 15 damage, in fact, to a single target. Pilgrim? Up against Hexia, Pilgrim might be more important. Pilgrim is capable of giving a target the ability not to die this turn, which gives me the ability to attack Hexia a lot more than I otherwise might as well as add self-shield to target sides this turn, which would make the fencer safe to just attack Hexia at will. I suspect I skip here. Having a weaken available for this fight, I think is really important because it would give the ability to prevent Hexia from summoning a demon. And fates should be more about uh, saving people. So I think I even take a broadsword off of you. Oof. Hexier is currently trying to uh, lock Roulette out of playing by. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, petrifying, rather many of their sides. Ooh, the witch happens to hit the cleanse, so I'm going to be able to prevent that, thankfully. I do really want to take all of these fences. Sorry, the, the imps off the field first. Okay, I would love to weaken Hexia this turn, please. Uh, Roulette is capable of dying if I roll poorly right now. Uh, so I'm going to stop rolling with Roulette for this turn. Maybe I should have pre-considered that and given them a salve earlier. Okay. Happy to continue pushing this roll right now. And one more. Okay. I throw some solves out on the field just so that the roulette is not going to die immediately next turn. Unfortunately, there is now a demon. The demon is trying to summon an imp. I really should go for health this turn with the witch. Ah, oh, but I do have mana to do that. Let's 
you strand to save roulette, and then, no, it can't save witch. It does so much damage. Should I start working on demons? Honestly, yeah. Although I also suspect that Roulette dies next turn. They have inflict pain, so if I roll a cantrip side, I'm dead, but also if I use, yeah, my die, I'm dead. Um, let's give the defense uh, the best available chance of working with this enemy. Okay, this is fine. I should be able to close out this fight with relative ease at this point. Hexier only has six health left. And yeah, that's all I needed. Fence from now can't die, and we'll strike Hexier a couple times until they're dead instead. Shortcut unfair, that is our first success in Shortcut Unfair. Sure, it took a two attempts, but we got there in the end. In the next episode... What other mode do I want to immediately have? I mean, there are Cursed, but I don't immediately want to go to the Cursed modes. Just yet? Perhaps in the next episode, I will run a choose party. But, for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody, the name of the game has been Slice and Dice 3.0, top left is a series playlist for all my content on the game past, present, and future. YouTube recommendations are down below, streaming past, other names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash RhapsodyPlays, I above the thank you, and special thanks to this episode to Miss Gibberish. Hopefully you'll all have been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you all next time.